Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I need everyone to get up on your feet if God has been good to you, if God has been awesome, if God has been provision for you, if you're still alive, my God, if you're still in your right mind, if you're still well, if you still have a roof over your head, glory to God, clothes on your body, shoes on your feet, my God, your children are well, glory to God, somebody clap your hands and give God a praise offering, the praise that is due unto him, the praise that he deserves, the praise Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. He inhabits the praises of his people, my God. He is the great and mighty God. The King of kings, the Lord of lords. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last, the bright, the morning star. The lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. Oh, somebody give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Come 
just the welcome of right now.
stay with us, to watch us and receive what God has for you today through this ministry. So I would like to know, is there anyone here for the very first time? If you're here for the first time, please stand and remain standing. For those of you watching us, if it's your first time, I would like for you to put a one in the chat letting us know that you're here for the first time. Glory to God. And I see we have some individuals in the back. I will try my best to hear your names, but if you can give us your name and tell us who invited you, bless the Lord. My name is Stephanie Prayer is powerful. Prayer changes our lives. 
Um, and please also subscribe to our YouTube channel, ELCC TV. We post words there, we post testimonies, so please also subscribe as well. And contact us if you have a testimony or need prayer. We can be reached at 301-776-7770 or at info at everlastinglife.org. We also have a special announcement that next, that August 20th is Men's and Women's Fellowship. Yes, so <laughs> the time and location is to be announced, but please um, um, stay tuned. We will be um, announcing more about that. Next, we will have our communion by Brother John Wilkes. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. 
Would you set free? Let's pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time that you've given us, Lord, to commemorate the Passover. Lord, we thank you for, for looking down on us and in spite of ourselves, Lord, you send Christ to die for us. We thank you for the opportunity to commemorate breaking of bread. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now we be favored with a selection from our boil of glass. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we have some powerful leaders. I tell you, I call them generals. Amen. They're generals in the Lord. Hallelujah. They are mighty battle axes. Amen. I can just stand and testify about them all day. For I just thank God for them. For the anointing that rests upon them, the mantle that they walk in, Lord have mercy. God has blessed them exceedingly as he has done great things with them. He's not finished yet. He's not finished yet. He's doing a great work with them even right now. So I just, again, I just want to just honor the man and woman of the house, the father and the mother, the papa and the mama. I thank God for them and for you, for the pastors, the ministers, the leaders. Amen. For the ushers, for all those, the workers in the house, the musicians, praise and worship team. Come on, how about that praise and worship this morning? Come on, we can bless it for that. Amen. God is faithful in everything that he does. Yes, he is. Amen. I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. And I tell you, sometimes when I say I'm going to talk for a few minutes, it's stretched out. But to God be the glory. Amen. But just notice that um, God is ever so faithful. And everything that he does. And I thank Sister Nikisha for the testimony she was sharing. Like you said, when you get up here, it's your opportunity to tell it. Amen. And this is the time that we can share and tell everything you know, that God has done for us. Just a blessing. Because you know, you still have your assignment. But you also still will give testimony to what God has done. Amen. You know, I mean, you can just, whatever. You, you know, he blessed you to jump out of a building that was on fire. Whatever. God does some great things. Amen. And it's, it's past human understanding. And you can just look back and realize that everything that's taking place in the earth now has already been spoken. Jesus prophesied back in Matthew 24. All of these things were happening uh, that's taking place now that there will be. Uh, one thing he said, number one, is be not deceived. Be not deceived. That means you can't go running and chasing Behind every pastor, bishop, apostle, and teacher. I'm not telling you that they are not speaking the truth of God's word. But you better get permission from God to go. Sometimes you can get caught up in a place where God did not send you. And you'll later regret it. You're not going to testify about that. God already got it. He already got it on video. But you have to understand that your life is precious before God. And God has bought you with a price. You all have been purchased with a price. That price was the blood of Jesus. And that blood was very expensive. It was so expensive, before the blood was dispensed, the body that carried the blood had to be anointed with some very expensive oil called spike oil. I don't know why I'm going this way, but today I just want to share with you about the preciousness of God and everything that he has done. See, because once that alabaster box was broken, they said that the perfume that was in it, it cost much money. Well, what do you think you are worth? Come on. You got a perfume in you that's much, much more. Come on. There's an oil that's in you. That somebody waiting to receive. Amen. Yeah. We can't sit down on the oil that God has in this box. Yeah. We have to let the oil come out so that God can get the glory. See, sometimes we sit too long. We got to stand up and say, God, it is in me and I got to give it up. And you can't give it up, stand down. You got to give it up, stand it up. See, when Jesus was about to be crucified as he sat in the seat. But I love what he done. He sat in the seat where the Pharisees and the Sadducees can see it. And this lady, Mary Magdalene, actually, her name is Mary, but she was from the land of Magdalene. And they call her Magdalene. That he cast seven demons out. She was so gracious. So precious and said, I thank you. She didn't have to open her mouth. She did it with action. Corresponding action. She just moved in and broke the box. And pulled the oil on him. And they said, did he know what kind of woman is here? One thing about it, let me tell you something. People going to look at you for your past and not your present. God sees you for where you are going, not where you are. You already see the finished product. You never, 
has been a problem to God looking at you where you think you are now. You have to see yourself a finished work that God has for you. It's already done. Jesus was already seen on the cross before he came into the earth. The word said that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Meaning, he was already on the cross, Brother John. He already stretched out on the cross before the foundation of the world. Then he done it again in Egypt when they took the lamb's blood and put it on the door. But what was in that body was more precious than silver and gold. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. When she anointed Jesus with that oil, they did. They missed the whole point. We're saying, why is you wasting this oil on him? And, and, and we can sell it, money, sell it and get the money to the poor. Jesus says, shut up. Shut up. You don't even know what she's doing. She's anointing me for my burial. And they still trying to phantom. What do you mean? Because when he was about to be crucified, they took him from judgment hall to the whipping post. From the whipping post back to the judgment hall. Then back up to Golgotha. When they got him to Golgotha, they crucified him. They took his body down by Joseph of Arimathea. He asked for the body from Pilate. Pilate gave him the body. And he took the body and laid it in the tomb. Point number one. In Jewish laws, they don't do what's called abomination. They don't embalm you. They do burial your wreck. They usually anoint the body. Come on. They anoint the body with spices and oil. Then they wrap it. Mary Magdalene was already in faith. Her faith already started moving. When she anointed him, with the spike Lord, she already anointed him because knowing by the Spirit of God, there won't be time. Because they had to hurry up before the Sabbath came. No one could work on the Sabbath. She already anointed the body. All they had to do was wrap it and put it in the tomb. Come on. He served the mighty God. But not only that. And then in the three days that he was there, he rose again. And she came back the, the third day. And she wanted to try to put spices. But he was gone. He was gone. Why am I saying this? The first, the faith that Mary Magdalene had, it was earth-shaking faith. Amen. This faith shook earth. She was the only one there to anoint him with the spike nod in front of all the political and religious leaders. She didn't care about their degrees. Come on now. It's not about your degrees. It's not about what you have accomplished. It's all about God. Right. If you think your degrees and your job can do more for you than God, okay, try it and see what happens. <laughs> see how fast the job leaves. That's why a lot of times I like to be in church first at all times. Sometimes I can't because of the distance I live. And I love to be here on time. But on my job, I get that. I get that. But I will not put that between my God. No. God comes first. He gave me the strength to get the job. He gave me the heart to work in these years. And then give me the money so I can pay him time. Come on now. And I'll still do it. To God be the glory. So going back to Mary Magdalene and the thing that she done, this is not about Mary Magdalene. This is about how great God is. He allowed her to do that. She became a pillar of her community, a witness to the world for what she done. Her name is in the history books. It's in the word of God. The thing that she already done. It is written about her. She came into the volume of the book that it was written of her. And she did, did exactly what God called her to do. So today, each one of y'all are carrying a special oil. Each one of y'all has a special anointing. I'm, I'm sure there's a special anointing in each one of you all. And that's why your praise is not like somebody else's. That's why your worship is not like somebody else's. It's different. Because God loves you. And he knows exactly where to meet you. He knows exactly what you stand in need of. He knows what you're going through even while you sit here. Come on here. God is a God that knows everything. He sent the people in just because of the, the sound of the praise and the worship. Listen to that. That's what he want to do. Draw people by the Spirit. Bring them in. 
But there are some that we have that's in this world that desire to separate from God. You can look at the news and see things taking place where all these things, like I said, was already prophesied. The thing that was prophesied where there will be wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquakes, you know, diabetes, disease, and you know, different places. These things are taking place. We're coming up with different diseases, but I thank God for our pastors thinking ahead of time, ahead of time to have you know the air purified with the purifiers in this corner, one in that corner, but also we still wear masks, except for like the speaker. Amen. So it's a blessing to know that diseases is on the rise, but it can't stop God. And I don't want you to get shaken in your imagination. Don't think about that stuff. See, because the only thing that God wants us to do is to walk by that faith. Amen. That faith is no matter what the doctor say. God say, whose report are you going to believe? I want you to believe my report. See, we can stand back and we can take everything the doctor say. We be messed up for life. We be messed up. We be a basket case. Come on. Some stuff the doctor think he see ain't even there. Remember, I said he thought he seen it. Come on. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a trip in the Word of God. We're going to go into the book of Samuel. I just want to share some things with you. Number one, Samuel was a prophet and a priest and a judge. Amen. He was a prophet, priest, and a judge. Now, what I love about Samuel, Samuel wore many hats. He had a lot of duty to do. I mean, listen, his mother prayed for him, for him to be born. And she prayed and prayed and prayed. And God blessed her with a son. Oh, he was a multitasker. He did a whole lot of things. Amen. Samuel, I didn't realize so much that he done until I began to read up on him. Now, this is not all about Samuel. But I just want to lay a foundation of who he was. He's a judge of Israel. One of the last judges, you know, one of the first prophets that's coming into this era after the judges. He became the prophet and also he was a priest. He was a priest. And a priest does sacrifices. Come on, I want y'all to keep your eyes open with me now. All right? All right. So he, he, uh, he was a prophet, he was a priest, and he also was a judge. He judged the people. And he didn't just judge the people in Israel. He went different places. He went to Mitzvah, you know. He went to Bethel. He also went to Ramah. But he had circuits set up. So that he can visit this spot this month. And three months later, he'll visit this spot. Three months later, he'll visit that spot. And he was going and judging the people and judging what they do. And as Samuel went out and fought with the children of Israel because he was a warrior as well. Now, you tell me, he's a priest, but he can fight. He's a judge, but he can fight. He's a prophet, but he can fight. He wasn't no chump. I want everybody to understand that. He could fight. And he fought hard and he didn't play. But I love the fact that when you look at certain things that take place in life, you also have to understand in the scripture, there's a scripture that says that a just weight is God's delight. Meaning you have to have a balance in your life. You have to have a balance, no matter what it is. The prophet Samuel, his balance was working with the people. But I'm not getting on him. I'm actually thanking God for what he has done to show us. The word of God says, things happen in the word of God is an example for us. His sons were left to judge because he got old. Listen to what it said in chapter 8 verse 1. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of the first one was Joel, and the name of the second was Abia. And they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned after Lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Now, and I just want to say that, don't that sound just like the world? It sounds just like the world. The rich get away with a lot of stuff, and the poor men that didn't do nothing get the charge. So, but, and then they take bribes to the back door, you know, they hiding money and say, yeah, give this sentence, that sentence. It's true. It happened. It's real. But that's not the point. Obedience leads to freedom. Obedience leads to freedom. As the sons were taking bribes, I can only imagine 
Did Samuel spend time with him? You know, like he should, like a father. Sometimes we can get so busy, we can miss the minor things. But sometimes we have to be able to balance those things. To all the people that are here, I'm going to just ask y'all this for one minute. Just put your books down and stand up for a minute. Come on, let's give God the glory. Give him the praise. Come on, just clap your hands. Come on, just clap your hands. Come on, come on. Come on, this is not something good to speak on. Come on, hold your eyes on it. Hold your eyes on it. Come on. Thank you. Come on, that's good. That's good. Come on. I want you to understand that when we into the word of God, come on, we got to pay attention. You might miss something. You don't want to miss God. Come on. Something that might happen that you miss it. I'm telling you, till you're going to later regret it. It's just like the five wise and the five foolish virgins. I'm not calling no one a a foolish virgin. No, but something happened where they didn't have oil. And there we go with the oil again. See, something happened. They didn't have enough oil in their containers. The oil was in them. They didn't have enough of it. They didn't have enough faith. So they went to sleep. They didn't wait like the other ones. But they ran and said, give us some of your oil. When they heard that the king is coming. The king is coming, church. I want everybody to be prepared. I heard Pastor Delisha say, read your word. You have to read your word. This is something that the children of Israel wasn't doing. You know, they had the word, they had God before them. They had God with them. They had God around them. God was protecting them. God watched over them. And as the sons began to do what they did, the elders had a meeting. The elders came to Samuel and said, look, your sons ain't following in your footsteps. They taking bribes. They stealing money. Lord know what else they doing. Make us a king. Make us a king like other nations. That hurt me to my heart. And I, I felt how Samuel felt when the people they actually are rejecting God. Yes. This is what's happening, church, and that's why I say, don't miss it. Don't miss it. There are people that are rejecting God for the things of this world. Yes. Yes. Why would you want to trade in a God that opened the Red Sea for you? Yes. Wow. That let you go through the Red Sea on dry ground? Yes. No, it wasn't no mud. No, it wasn't no mud. It was dry, just like this car. Dry. You're going to trade that in for other nations, and this God not only opened up the Red Sea, but gave you water out of a rock. And the rock followed you. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it said that the rock was Christ. See, that's what you got to read the Bible. You'll miss that. They had, now I understand why God told Moses, you're not going to make it to the promised land. He was striking Christ. He said, speak to the rock. When he got mad and said, shall we fetch water for you? And hit the rock three times. God said, okay. <laughs> you come on up here. You won't be going into the promise. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you, but you ain't going in there. But I looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Please read it. And it said that those things was done before the hour's example. That's right. But it said they did eat of the same spiritual meat, drank of the same spiritual drink, and also the water out of the rock. Yeah. And I said, huh? I said, but the rock followed them in the wilderness. Because remember, they had to go back to that rock two more times. The first time he tapped it, because the Lord told him. Second time he spoke. The third time he struck it three times out of anger. The rock was Christ that followed him. Who would want to serve another God? And I got a God to provide water from a rock. Come on here. A water coming out of a rock. It might come up underneath or over top, but I love it. Good shit. That the cattle, everybody can drink. Yes. Quail come into your camp. A chicken box. Come on in. <laughs> Quail coming in. Bread, manna from heaven. Two 
Yeah. 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 Huh? And you eat. Let us see, come on, what God can provide that? I don't know about that. But God is so faithful. But listen, and not only did he did that, but he showed himself mighty to Moses in a burning bush. But the bush wouldn't consume. It's just like this table on fire. But it ain't burnt to a crisp. It's just flaming. Then you want to trade this God for gods that everybody else serve? They serving other gods. They want a king that's going to build him Asherah or Baal, Moloch, and you building this thing with your hand and you bow down to it. Are you crazy? But you want to trade in a God that not only provides that. But a God that also made the sun stand still for Joshua. And told the moon, don't move. 24 hours the sun stood still so they could have victory over the Melodites. When they came out of slavery, they was weak, they was tired, and they just was moving. Amalek attacked them from the back. It's just like the devil. He always tried to attack you at your weakest point. You gotta stay prepared. You gotta stay ready. Stay prayed up and stay in your word. Amen. But they want a king like other nations. Yes. The kings of other nations, Israel already dominated them because of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, 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 and Jacob. That God helped them to overcome those other nations. Why you want that God didn't protect them? But you want a king like theirs? God was hurt. God said, this is what you do, Sam. Give it to him. He said, stop crying. What are you crying for? They didn't reject you. They rejected me. He said, so get up and make him a king. You, you, you make him one. He said, but tell them what type of king they're going to get. A king that's going to use them and abuse them. Have their children running out before they chariots and, and, and work in their stores. And oh yeah, and they're going to give him a tenth of their school. Yes. They pay ties to him, not God. So the question is, will a man rob God? There you have it. So all in the light of that, Samuel made him a king. He got Saul. And God allowed him to anoint him. And God just sit back and watch. They want a king like every other nation. But this king was selfish. This king was for himself. Come on, you cannot afford to allow uh, another nation to see the God that you serve as weaker than the God that he served. <laughs> Our God is not weak. Our God is very strong. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God that brought people through surgeries. They never thought they was going to make it through. We done had a God that brought people out of prison houses that they didn't know what they were going to go back and do once they got released. We, we serve a mighty God. A God that gives houses that you didn't build and also gives you water out of a rock that you didn't even dig for. He also had given you money in the bank that you don't even know where it came from. Anybody there? Anybody been there? Anybody see a deposit in your bank? You're like, where that money come from? Anybody had problems trying to get a home, and next thing you know, you in the house. Anybody had a problem trying to get a job, next thing you know, you got the job. And then you're at the head of the class. You're almost like a supervisor on the job. To be told, but you keep it down low because you don't want nobody to get excited because they know what type of God you serve. Your job can take you and fly you different places all over the world. Serve Almighty God. Amen. A God that never sleep or slumber. Amen. Amen. So they made him a king. And Saul did exactly what God told him to do. And they told him to go and wait for him in Ramah. He was going to come and sacrifice with Samuel. Samuel said, wait for me. But he got to looking at his watch and said, wait did that watch is back then. He said, Samuel's taking too long. Go ahead and sacrifice. And the moment he sacrificed, Samuel showed up. See, God delayed Samuel for, for a reason. Because he knew he was going to rush ahead of God. Point number two. 
He couldn't wait on God. He had a better agenda. Meaning he going to sacrifice himself. Actually, he was a people pleaser. He was worried about what the people said. Then after he explained to Samuel, Samuel said, you disobeyed God. He is not pleased. Then he took him and said, now, go destroy the Malachites. Every one of them. Babies, children, mothers, daughters, everything. Cattle, kill everything. Don't leave nothing. He left and he didn't do that right. He killed some things and he saved some things for himself. He took the Malachite king, Agag, and kept Agag to the side. Samuel killed him. And Samuel said obedience is better than sacrifice. See, you go ahead and sacrifice ungodly things. God want obedience Amen. first Amen. before you sacrifice. He couldn't do it. He couldn't live up to the standard. So God told him he's going to get another king. And he got angry. And he ripped Samuel's skirt. And Samuel said, the kingdom of God has been ripped from you. The kingdom of Israel is gone. It's out of your hands. And he's given it to another. In come King David as a child. Remember, David was a king before he was anointed. David was a king before he was in his mother's womb. Come on. Everything about us is already done. The Bible, the, 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 when you go to the courts of heaven and you begin to see there are books in the presence of the Lord, those books are on you. Amen. You got a book of destiny, a book of purpose, a book of righteousness, a book of life. You don't just have one book, no. You have books on you. Books. Yes. So the book that was written for David was already there and God knew it. The time is already set, and it was time for David to come in. And the chapter, God said, get him now. Samuel, go look through uh, uh, the house of Jesse. And he looked through Jesse's house. He seen all his brothers. He said, I don't want none of them. <laughs> he said, none of them. He said, is there one more, Jesse? Jesse said, yes. There's one out there with the sheep. He was ministering. Come on here. David was ministering to the sheep and said, can you imagine? Now he done wrote over half of the Psalms. And he plays a harp. That's anointed. Yes. And he's singing to the sheep. That's why they couldn't go nowhere. The sheep couldn't go nowhere. He penned the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yes. He's singing to the Lord, but he ministered to the sheep. That's his congregation. He's anointed. He's playing the harp and singing. Can you imagine? She couldn't go nowhere. They was in. They was in heaven. She heaven. <laughs> the anointing was so powerful they couldn't go nowhere. Even the food tastes different every day. They just ate. They just loved it, man. He ain't had nothing to run away. A sheep, a goat might come. I mean, a, a, a bear might come or lion. He destroyed them. He not taking nothing from them. No, God gave them to. And that's how we have to be with one another, love one another, unselfishly. Amen. And that's what he was doing. And I love it because when he anointed him, he said, bring him here. And when the shorty came in, I called him shorty. He said, now everybody stand up. This is the king I chose. Amen. He already knew the mistakes David would make, just like each one of us. Yes. He already know about us. He already know everything you want to do, even after you church, yeah. even as you go home, yeah. but keep the Lord before you. I don't care where you go yeah. or what you do. Keep the Lord before you always. Yeah. How, how, how The saying is practice does make perfect. When you practice the word of God is perfected in you. You have to continue it. Amen. You continue to pray. Continue to seek the Lord. We're in some trial times. These times are trialful. You know, we have we're anger management taking place all over the world. People killing one another left and right. You know, carjacking. All kinds of things taking place. But we don't have to fear. Because we serve a mighty God. And God gives us wisdom. As David became king, David destroyed the king of the Philistines. The anointing was so powerful that when he destroyed Goliath, the whole earth shook. This was a giant. So how many giants are you killing in your life? How many giants do you want to kill? 
you already had the power of the living God behind you. Amen. You got the spirit of God in you. Yes. Come Amen. on, we are giant killers. Amen. We can't sit there. Remember when the children of Israel in the book of Numbers, they were supposed to go up and spout the land. And the land was full of giants. The great clusters were so big, two men had to carry it. But they say we look like fleas or flies in our own eye. That's the way they saw themselves. We want to see ourselves differently. That's right. Amen. Yeah. So when God told Samuel to get away from him, stop crying for Saul, anoint David, David became king. David became king and done exactly what God told him to do. He had a lot of victories. Amen. But it didn't stop there. Fast forward. David had a great, great grandmother named Ruth. That's right. <laughs> Ruth. She also was in the line of Jesse and the line of Jesus Christ. And so are we. And we can go fast forward to Jesus back to the cross. He come out of the line of David. Isn't it amazing? He is the king of kings coming through the human bloodline to declare unto us the way of salvation. This is why we sit in church. This is why we receive from the Lord. Because God has given us a mandate to come in. This is the filling station. This is where we come to get filled up. Amen. Because God knows what you're going to go through Monday, Tuesday, sure Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. He knows what you're going to go through Amen. Saturday. He knows what you're going to go through. Amen. Not that we prophesy enough will happen, but this preps you and prepares you Amen. for when you Amen. go forward. Amen. You have to be ushered out Amen. and not stay still. Remember when I first started, there's an oil in you. Yes. There's a special oil. And the oil will never run dry. Amen. You have an anointing upon your life that people need. Amen. People need it. It's not about sitting looking precious and pretty. And, no. We go with boldness. Right. We talk to people. Pray. We ask them what's going on with Pray. them. How you doing? Amen. Can I pray for you? Yes. Can I talk to you? I know I done jumped off my message, but this is a message that we got to be encouraged. You got to be encouraged to go up and get out. We have to win souls for the kingdom of God. People are dying, and some of them are dying on our own watch. We can't allow it to happen. We have to reach out to them in Walmart, talk to somebody, in Sam's Club, Costco, the gas station. It don't hurt. I talked, me and Barbara, my wife, uh, Minister Barbara, talked to a young man that said the Bible was contradictory. And we asked him where. He couldn't show us. I said, just tell me the truth. It's something that you heard. He said, yeah, a lot of people say. I said, yeah. I said, but what you do is you ask God. You ask God. See, a lot of people that don't read the Bible say, oh, that's contradictory. Oh, you heard that from somebody else, didn't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what happened. And you go by what you hear. Yes. Just like the men in the days of Samuel said, give us a king like other nations. They heard little stuff. See, that king let them get away with, with mess. They can do stuff. They can marry, intermarriage. They can go and cross over and do this and that. And that's not what God had in mind for them. That's why God told us do not become unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Because it will contaminate your anointing. Amen. It will contaminate your faith. Amen. And it will cause you to turn your back on God. Amen. Look what happened to Korah. Korah ain't want to follow Moses. The enemy got in him. Korah got mad and said, who made you king? And Moses said, well, those who Korah stand over there, those with me stand over here. And the ground opened up and swallowed Korah. Because God was saying, Moses, I'm for you. If anybody will go with him, let them stand way over there. Because I'm about to show Korah who is king and who appointed you to be king. Amen. It's the same way when you go places to minister to people and share. You can just start telling people how good God is. That's right. How you doing? You know God is so good. And you can just start talking to them. After a while, they'll start telling you things. And you say, like, well, is it all if I pray for you? And they say, yeah. Believe me. This is what's going to happen. 
By the time you finish praying, somebody else will jump up in there. Yeah. My wife and I was praying for these young girls from Israel. We were standing by the rack where all the carts go. And we saw a woman come up with her cart. But the woman, I thought she was going to put the cart in the rack and go. I'm praying because I got my eyes open. <laughs> so I'm watching and praying. Amen. The woman joined over by us. And said, I couldn't move. I couldn't move. I had to hear this prayer. This is what God wants. You're a magnet. You got an anointing. God, y'all precious, man. Y'all precious, man. God, my God. Y'all don't even see what I see, man. Y'all glowing in here like lights. <laughs> There's a special anointing on y'all, man. And I'm telling you, I just thank God for each and every one of y'all. Amen. But just keep trusting God with all your heart. Don't let anything break. There's going to be some things that make you upset, but you got to think quickly like yeah. the devil's alive. Right. God, I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to give you glory. Right. Even at that moment, trouble comes. Mm -hmm. Just think, I'm going to just give you a praise song mm -hmm. so I can just praise my way out of this. Give me a worship song so I can worship my way out of this. Trials will come. Jesus prophesied it in the book of Luke. And he said there are times coming that offenses will come. They're going to come. They're designed to come. But they're not designed to take over you. Amen. 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 So we're going to keep our faith in Jesus Christ. We're going to trust him with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. Amen. Amen. And I'm not finished yet. I'm just about. But also, remember this. The children of Israel already heard the statement that a king was coming because God had anointed, told Moses to anoint Joshua to be a man that would go before them in and out in the book of Deuteronomy. And Moses anointed him because God had already told him, you're not going to the promised land. Joshua will be the one to lead them. See, God knew exactly what a people need in the time that they needed. We keep praying for leaders, pray for righteousness in this nation. That's right. Amen. The word of God says righteousness is a nation, but sin is a reproach to any man. Amen. When a nation is exalted, a nation is prosperous. A nation is going to be honored and blessed by God. Because in righteousness, God's name will remain. And we will continue to keep him lifted up so he can draw all men unto him. Amen. Because God is so faithful in everything he does. Amalek was wicked. And we got some wicked people out there. Mm. But we just have to stay prayed up and God covers you. Amen. Amen. I never known that Amalek was the grandson of Esau. And Esau, God said, I hate Jacob, whom I love. Because Esau was disobedient. Mm -hmm. Esau began to get fond women when they told him not to. See how rebellion is. Rebellion, iniquity, transgression. Same thing. Courts are happy. Transgression. Doing the same thing your daddy did. Your daddy told you don't do it. You done done it anyway. You're doing just like him. But you don't have to be like that. Amen. I thank God I didn't go to the same church my mother and father went to. But it was a blessed church. God want to take you somewhere different. Yes. You go a level up. Level up. That's why your children accomplish more than what you accomplish. Because you're blessed. And your children are blessed. Amen. And your children, children are blessed. Amen. And they will be blessed. Amen. Because you are blessed. Amen. 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 So with that, we're going to get ready to shut down. To God be the glory. I'm going to ask everyone to stand on their feet. But please remember God. Please. Don't depart from God. I just want to bring that word as encouragement. There's so many people that are walking away from the faith. And they turn into other things. Some people are following uh, Islam. Some people are following demons. Some are following witchcraft. Yeah. Some are following all kinds of things. We don't need that type of life. We need righteousness in our life. Yeah. We need the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We need God to show us that He's the great I Am. He already done it. That's why He allowed Him to go through what they've been through, through the wilderness. Through the floods, through the fire. Yeah. So with that, I just want to give God the glory, the praise, and the honor. I'm just asking anyone here that I know. Some people came in. I don't know if anyone 
that want to trust God and give your life to Jesus, starting today, there's not a whole lot of talk because I know one thing, either a person going to do it or they're not. We're not in, we're going to be in the market or try to make you come. We love you. We want you to come. But we pray, this is the day of salvation. Hard not your heart. Let this be a day that you come to Jesus. Let this be the first day for the rest of your life. You was already born. Become born again. So that way you can see things in a new light. So that you can be filled with that oil. Come on. It's out here for you. Is there anyone that want to take this time to just give your life to Jesus Christ? God love you. Amen. It's going to be a time that's going to come where people be asking for salvation and some will still say no. And when Jesus come back, they will want to go. And they go, well, what happened? Because the seal has to be in you. The seal of Jesus has to be upon you. He seals those that are his because we are his. We've been brought with for Christ. Not seeing any, is there anyone who need prayer for anything? They need prayer to be uh, reunited, to rededicate your life to Christ. Is there anyone here that need prayer for anything? For pain, body aches, a child, a grandparent, whatsoever, whosoever. Come on, we're going to pray for them. We're going to bless the Lord. Anybody, don't be ashamed. If you need prayer, come forward. I mean, look, don't wait because if the Lord said, come, if you need prayer, come. Come on, just come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Those that are here, I thank you. Hallelujah. They're still coming. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We give God glory. Come on. Let's bless the Lord for them as they come. Come on. They're still coming. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. He is not finished. He's not done. Come on. God is a mighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
give them a praise.
dedicated our life to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord for her. Hallelujah.
continue our worship, and we're going to do this with ways to give. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Ways to give. For those that are watching live on Facebook, our website is www.everlastinglife.org. Click give, then click donate. Amen? You can go to our cash app at Everlasting Life CC. Everlasting Life CC. For our finance department is ELCC Finance Department, number 301-776-7770. PayPal and Zelle is finance at everlastinglife.org. That's PayPal and Zelle. Also, we have the good old mail, ELCC PO Box 1110 Laurel, Maryland. 20725 and the bank wire is on the website. Amen. Hallelujah. So that to God be the glory as we come to give our um, Yes, you can bring your tithes, your offering, your seed. You can just come on up. Hallelujah. We're going to bless it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we Oh, say
I'm going to tell you something. Be on the lookout. Somebody going to need your prayers. Amen. Somebody this week. It's amazing how we go through something and God allows someone to come to us and say, can you pray for me? Yeah. That lets you know you're not going to go through as much as somebody else. Amen. And the thing about it, though, you have what they need. Amen. This is what God want to do with us. Sure. He want to use us. Amen. So it's like, okay, he's okay. I, I, I know, I know the problem. Like with Abraham, I know how you feel. I know it's been 99 years. But this time next year, Sarah going to have a child. Hey. Said, but, Lord, but, 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 but Lord, I, I, got, I got somebody in my tent. He said, no, I ain't using him. Amen. This will come out your lawn. Amen. Meaning, it has to come from you. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Something that's birthed in you is going to come out. Amen. And the world needs it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And Father, first of all, we thank you and give you praise for the service. We thank you, Lord, for the tithes, the offering. May it multiply to running over. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you send a supernatural anointing to overflow, Father, the finances we see in this house. This is for the furthering of your kingdom. This is for kingdom work, oh, Father, that's going forth in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the souls that have given their life to Jesus today, those who we dedicated. Father, meet everyone need. Every word, every prayer, seal it in the power of the Holy Ghost and in the blood of Jesus. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can actually even imagine. To you, O oh God, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. It's in Jesus' mighty name. And let the church shout. Amen. Greet somebody. Hallelujah.